Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about everything you need to know on One Health Pass, when to register and how to register the three steps in your successful registration to One Health Pass. So let's start with who needs to register? Do I have to register? Yes, all passengers need to register regardless of your vaccination status, regardless of your nationality, as long as you're entering the Philippines, you need to register to One Health Pass. Now, how to register? There are three steps to this. First, we'll prepare for the required documents. Then we will register and then we'll keep the QR code done. That's it. Three steps. Now, for the first step, let's prepare for the following. Your itinerary or ticket. So you must have it on your hand before you go to the website and register. Your itinerary or ticket. Your passport because you will be needing your passport number which should be found on the top right corner of your the bio page of your passport. Then you'll need your vaccination proof. So it's either your primary series or with your booster shot. Next, we need your negative test result. If you are not exempted from pre-departure testing, let's say you are an adult traveler without booster, then you will need pre-departure testing, which is either an RT-PCR or an antigen test. Next, we have your Philippine address. So if you're staying with family or friends in the Philippines, the residents, or if you're staying in a hotel, resort, or tourist destination, the address of that hotel or resort. And that's it. In summary, your itinerary or ticket, your passport, your vaccination proof, your negative test result if you don't have a booster, and then your Philippine address. That's it. Yes, that's it. Next up, our next step is to register to One Health Pass. So to register, you have to go to onehealthpass.com.ph. This is the only official government website. If you are in a website, you're trying to register and they ask for your credit card details, stop right there. You're in the wrong website. The One Health Pass is absolutely free. There is no fee. So please go to the only official government website that is onehealthpass.com.ph and avoid those phishing websites which ask for your credit card details. No, don't go there. Only go to the official government website. That one, onehealthpass.com.ph. When to register? Jennifer, I'm flying in three months time. I want to register now. Can I do that? No, there's a time and place for everything. Char. So it would depend of your, on your vaccination status. So if you're fully vaccinated with at least one booster, you can register within three days before your departure. So you can register three days before your flight or two days before your flight or a day before your flight or even on the day of your flight. While for those who are fully vaccinated without booster, you would have to wait for your negative test result before you can register. Again, if you're fully vaccinated without booster, you can register after you receive your negative test result because you would have to submit that during the application. Now, the last step is keep your QR code. So this is the final product. This is our goal for this uh, registration to receive your One Health Pass QR code. This is what you would need to present upon check-in and upon arrival in the Philippines. Jennifer, do we have to have it printed? No, you can keep a digital copy, a screenshot on your phone for the QR code, or you can have it printed. It's totally up to you. So with this QR code, it has your QR code and your unique um, reference number. So that's all you need, your QR code and your reference number. Let's go. Again, this is very, I want to emphasize that registration to One Health Pass is a must. Without your QR code, you will not be allowed boarding. So please register. Now let's go and register together. So I will show you, I can show you how to register. So to register, go to onehealthpass.com.ph, go to Chrome or whatever browser you have there, onehealthpass.com.ph. I find Chrome to be the best. You can register through your using your phone or your tablet or your computer. Right now, I'm using my laptop. Okay, 
So when we open the site, there is a warning. It says here the okay, it mentions here those who are exempted from pre-departure testing. So we have fully vaccinated nationals with at least one booster are exempted or foreign or Filipino minors aged 12 to 17 who are fully vaxxed and accompanied by fully vaxxed with boosted parent or guardians. And we have foreign or Filipino minors aged 12 below regardless of their vaccination status who are accompanied by fully vaccinated with boosted parent or, par or guardians. So let's click that I understood and let's go OK. So we have here the website. <laughs> let's click register. This box here that says one, click that one, register. All right. Another note, just, just click OK. And then another note says here the um, symptoms for monkeypox. So guys, don't travel if you have any of these symptoms except for headache or back pain. It's pretty normal, but if you're showing signs, you know, get that doctor certificate. But if you have no symptoms, just click done and close. So before we go ahead to answer the questions, we must be aware that the information here are collected by the Department of Health. It is important for our contact tracing. You are responsible for the information that you're going to put in here. Make sure that they are true, complete, and correct. All right, all right, let's go ahead with the first question. When is your departure going to the Philippines? When is your flight? So for example, I have here a ticket I wanna show you. Where is that one? Mm, this one. So this is flight number uh, leaving LA on July 12, arriving in the Philippines on July 14. So my departure date is July 12. So July 12. When are you arriving in the Philippines? Go check your itinerary, it would show there. So arrival in the Philippines is on July 14. All right, July 14. Next is select type of port of entry airport. Then we have to find our airport of arrival or entry. So um, some people have questioned, where is your port of entry? So for example, if your flight, if you're coming originally from the USA, then you have a layover in Singapore, then your final destination, your port of entry is Manila, and your final destination is Bohol. Manila is your port of entry because it is the first airport you are entering the Philippines, and it is the airport where you will be cleared by the immigration. So that is your port of entry. In this case, that is Manila. All right, and then the question here says, select port of entry, which terminal? Is it in terminal one, two, or three? So then you would have to check your itinerary. It would be mentioned there. So for example, this one, Singapore to Manila, it says here, terminal three. Naia terminal three, you see it? This one, I wanna emphasize. Here, it's, just, it's mentioned here. Yeah, this one, Terminal 3. So let's find Terminal 3. There you go. Next up is arriving as passenger crew, aircraft passenger. What is our classification? We are foreign nationals. Have you been vaccinated for COVID-19? Yes, a vaccination is a must for entry to the Philippines. Unless you're entering to, through Cebu and you're taking that risk of entering as unvaccinated. Well, this guide is for fully vaccinated. Now we have vaccination card. If you're vaccinated overseas, which most of you are, select national vaccine card. And then you would have to find your country where you got vaccinated. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose United States of America because that's where most of my viewers are from. <laughs> so country where, where you got vaccinated. However, Jennifer, well, I'm vaccinated in, let's say in... Sweden, but Sweden is not on this list. What am I going to do? Well, there's an option other country not listed above select that one if your country is not on the list Simple All right, but for the purpose of the of this video, I'm going to be using white CDC card. So US All right, let's go click next All right, here we are in the one health pass registration platform before we proceed, it's important to know that all the fields in red 
Uh, all the fields in red and with asterisk must be filled out or answered. So for example, questions like last name, you can't leave it blank. Okay, you need to put an answer. Otherwise, your registration will not be successful. So let's start with personal profile with your last name. So Jennifer, the name that you should put in here should match what's in your passport. Go open your passport and whatever is in there should match in your One Health Pass. So here we have the passport of Obama, Michelle Obama here. <laughs> okay, but I'm not going to be using her name. <laughs> so we have last name. All right, last name, your first name. How about middle name? So normally in the Philippines, in the Philippines, under the Philippine regulations, for single women and men, the middle name refers to the surname of the person's mother. Uh, I understand that in most countries, they don't have that in their air, in their passport. Like there's no middle name here. It doesn't mention your the last name of your mother when she was single. So for foreign nationals, you can just leave it blank. Anyways, there is no red asterisk there. So we just leave it blank if you don't have middle name in your passport. Then we have suffix, sex. Unfortunately, the Philippines only has two options. And then we have your birthday. As, ex as, it, is, as, it, is, as, sorry, as it is written in your passport, it should match. Start with the year so you don't have to do it all over again. And it's autom it will automatically show your age and then your civil status. Are you married, single, divorced? The nationality, if you're American, it's an A, American. And then occupation, what do you do for a living? So we have agriculture, airline crew, professional, housewife, entertainer, or diplomat, clerical or sales, student, retired or pensioner, worker or laborer, not stated or others. I will be choosing others. And then passport number, please go get your passport. So you will be needing your passport number. I'm going to put random numbers here because this is just for presentation. Then we have country code. So this is talking about your mobile number. So with, depending where you are in the world, you have to put in your mobile number. I'm not sure about the mobile number in the US. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna choose a random number here. So just write your contact number there. Okay, then we have email. Email should be active, should be something that you have access. Then we have educational attainment. Attainment, I know it's weird. Why is the Philippine asking about my educational attainment? Attainment, sorry. I don't know, but just answer it. You know, Philippines in their forms. So we have less than high school, high school, some high school, vocational college. Okay, I'm just going to choose high school. And then permanent country of residence. Do so you live normally in the Philippines or in the US or wherever in the world? Just find your country there. And then country of birth. Where were you born? All right. Just it's an alphabetical order. Just find it. Then where do you live normally? Permanent city of residence. I'm going to put Los Angeles. And then destination upon arrival in the Philippines, as I mentioned before, you have to sh you have to give a Philippine address. So where will you be staying in the Philippines? Simple. Are you going to be staying with family or friends? Then use residence. Are you going to stay in a hotel, in a resort, or in a tourist destination? So it's totally up to you. Choose wherever suits you. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose name of hotel or resort or tourist destination. Oh, Jen Hotel, Jen Terry Hotel, <laughs> in my own hotel. This is just for presentation, guys. Bear with me. So we have to find, let's say, Ma. Oh, we're talking about province here. So let's choose NCR. I'm going to choose Valenzuela. So if you guys are not aware where is your hotel or resort located, you can just simply Google it. Google is your friend. 
for example, my favorite hotel. No, I haven't been here, but for example, Conrad Hotel in Manila. Where is it located? Just Google it. Or sometimes you can find it in the hotel's email to you. Or here, Seaside Boulevard, Pasay, Metro Manila. Something like that. Or you can email your hotel to ask about the province and municipality. So next we have travel details. So let's start with country or territory of port of exit. So for example, for this flight, if you're coming from the USA with layover in Singapore, final destination Manila, where is your port of exit? So port of exit is talking about where are you coming from originally? Where do you live or where do you work? Where you've been? <laughs> so for the purpose of this video, you're coming from the USA. So ignore your layover countries. Port of exit is talking about where are you coming from originally? Okay, so that's United States of America. Let's find it. Yep. And then airline name. So for example, this flight. For example, Singapore, Los Angeles to Singapore via Singapore Airlines. And then Singapore to Manila via Singapore Airlines. So your airline name would be the airline that you will be using to fly to the Philippines. The airline that will be landing in the Philippines. So just assuming that I were that I was flying with different airlines. Let's say from Los Angeles to Singapore, I'm flying with Singapore Airlines. And then from Singapore to Manila with Scoot. I will be using Scoot because that will be that is the airline I'm flying to land in the Philippines. Okay, but for the purpose of this video, since my flight is booked under the same airline, it's Singapore Airlines. I just want to make that very clear. I don't think I have made justice. For example, you're flying United Airlines. For example, uh, US to Korea. Korea. And then from Korea, you're flying Korean Air. Korean Air, Korea to Manila. So the airline name that you would be putting, that you would be using for this question airline name would be Korean Air. Okay? Because this is the flight that's landing in Manila or in the Philippines. Hope that makes sense. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using my flight will be Singapore Airlines. Singapore Airlines, where is that? Here. Then flight number, go check your itinerary. So for example, this flight, Los Angeles to Singapore, we have SQ37. And then Singapore to Manila, we have SQ910. Which flight number will be, are we going to use? We will be using the flight that is landing in the Philippines, SQ910. So SQ910, there we go. What if Jennifer, I'm not a, I can't find my flight number on the list. It's not there. And even if I try to put, there's no others option. What am I going to do? So if you can't find your flight number in the options, you have to go back to airline name and then select, and then select non-commercial flight. Again, if you can't find your flight number in the drop-down option, go back to airline name and then select non-commercial flight. So we have that sorted. If you can't find your flight number, choose non-commercial flight. But let's go back to our original flight. We have Singapore Airlines, SQ910, right? And then let's go to seat number. If you don't know your seat number, don't worry. You can just leave it blank. There is no red asterisk to it. But if you know your seat number, please put it in there. Next question is a new question. Estimated days in the Philippines. They're asking how long do you plan to stay in the Philippines? And don't worry, this is just an estimate. Let's say I put in here 30 days. But then once I was... Once I arrive in the Philippines, I realize I like it so much here. I met a nice Filipina and I want to stay longer. Yes, you can. And don't worry about this one health pass. <laughs> All right. Now, what if Jennifer, I want to stay 90 days, but I don't have a visa. I'm coming in visa free. So regularly, right? Most of you are coming visa free. And if you're coming visa free, you're only given 30 days stay. So Jennifer, should I put 30 days here? 
don't worry guys put the honest answer and don't worry about this one health pass immigration won't even look at it okay be honest with your answer even though you're only given 30 days you're only allowed initial allowable stay for your visa free entry don't worry if you want to stay longer just answer truthfully okay because extending your stay in the philippines is very simple just bring cash passport and go to an immigration office is all so just be honest with your answer here estimated days in the philippines next we have main purpose of visit to the philippines so for foreign nationals we have a diff we have different options so we can go with work employment visit friends and relatives holiday pleasure or vacation health government business convention uh, with the easiest answer to this is holiday vacation there's other options as well for example retirement returning resident next question we have is very important this is talking about our vaccine information remember if you're fully vaccinated you may enter the philippines no quarantine upon arrival it is important to submit your vaccination proof in one health pass first question we have your first dose so when did you get vaccinated please check your vaccinations uh, your vaccination card so i have here a white cdc card this is accepted remember that any vaccination certificate issued by a foreign government is accepted in the philippines so we have here the vaccination proof i got my first dose last april 29 2021 so always start with the year and then month april 21 okay then we have pfizer and then second dose yes if you received one shot of j and j you are considered fully vaccinated then we have second dose date of second dose it is when is that on may 20 2021 may 20 2021 okay it's the same brand pfizer and then have you received your booster shot it would be better because you would be exempted from pre-departure testing so don't uh, it's never too late to get your booster even if you got boosted today and you travel tomorrow you are considered boosted there's no waiting time so we have here booster shot uh, february 1 2022 february yes booster and then february 1 2022 February 1. Okay. Name of the vaccine is still the same Pfizer. Where did you get vaccinated? I got vaccinated in this video. It's in the United States of America, US. So it's time to upload our vaccination card or certificate. Formats accepted are PDF, JPEG, JPEG, and PNG. I would suggest, guys, to uh, take a picture of your vaccination proof picture is the best because it's not a heavy file if you submit a pdf file it may exceed the, the five megabytes limit it may not be accepted a picture would be a better format or a screenshot if you have it on your phone okay white cdc card i have it here next is upload proof of booster so i've already uploaded my white cdc card with my booster information should i upload another should i just re-upload it or answer no uh, as for me i will just re-upload it to avoid any trouble and it's important that they have the information of my booster shot so i will put it i will just re-upload it since i have i have it here in all in one card okay choose file cdc card with booster all right next question we have your country's traveled so first your vaccine uh, your country of port of exit that would be the u.s and if you have layovers in other countries so for example this flight i have a layover in singapore singapore so i'll put it there singapore so all countries where you've been for the last 30 days just put it in there there are four boxes here next question is your health declaration have you been exposed to a known probable or confirmed covid-19 case for the last 14 days have you developed any symptoms were you swabbed 
or were you exposed to a person diagnosed with monkeypox? Yes, no, or unknown? As for me, I think it's no. And then clinical information. And don't worry, guys, if you have been exposed, uh, as long as you have no symptoms, you're fully vaccinated, you shouldn't have to quarantine. But the safe answer would be no. Please don't travel if you're sick. Next, we have clinical info. Have you been sick in the past 30 days? Yes or no? If you answer yes, you have to declare what symptoms you encountered, such as diarrhea, fever, sore throat, ano, anosmia, I didn't know that's how it's called, loss of smell, back pain, rashes, you know, COVID symptoms, serious COVID symptoms. So fast for me, I don't think so, no. Do you have any comorbidity, just like, uh, like hypertension, diabetes, lung disease and don't worry if you answer yes again if you're fully vaxxed there's no quarantine and if you ha have a valid test result if you are required to show it if the test result is valid there's no quarantine now if you develop any symptoms um, from the time of registration until your arrival you must declare it to the quarantine medical officer at the airport so please take care of yourselves do not get sick so that is all the questions that we have here to agree with the terms and conditions. That we agree that all information is true, complete, and correct. That we authorize the Philippine government to collect our data. And that if ever, let's say they found that we have COVID symptoms, we will be sent to quarantine. Like if you have fever and cough, please don't travel. And then that is all. We abide with the Philippine rules. We click yes, we hereby attest that all information is correct and true. And then here is a box here with red text. We have to copy what's exactly on that box. If it's a small letter, then if it's in lowercase, we have to type it in lowercase. If it's in uppercase, we have to type it in uppercase. It's kind of blurry, so please get your glasses or ask help from your family. <laughs> It has to be correct. 9MX NBB. I think that is all. Let's double check that we have answered all the question with all the questions with red asterisk. Okay. Because if you miss one question with the red asterisk, you would have to answer it and then you would have to re-upload your vaccination proof. So it's really important that you answer all questions with red asterisk. So it saves you time. So yay, we got it successfully. Here we have our QR code. Once you have it, take a screenshot. Take a screenshot of that QR code. And then keep it to yourself. Save it on your phone. All right? It's important you save it because as soon as you have this QR code, you're good to go. This is it. This is what we need. And we can check our email to check if we have received it. Let's see. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Sometimes it happens that they're not able to send it to your email and don't stress. Don't stress about it. As long as you have the barcode, uh, the QR code, you're good to go. That's why I'm suggesting that as soon as this shows up, screenshot, have a copy, and then you're good to go. Jennifer, what if my flight gets rescheduled? Or what if it's changed? Do I have to make a, reg a new registration or can I just update it? No. Guys, once your flight is changed, you must make a new registration because travel details cannot be updated nor changed. We can only update our personal profile. So let me show you how to update. So let's go to onehealthpass.com.ph and then go to e oh, my profile, sorry. My profile. And then it asks for your um, last name. So put in your last name. Your transaction number is this one. The numbers below the QR code. So put it in there and then log in. Here we have, it only shows barcode, ignore that. You can edit your profile. Click edit my profile here. Edit my profile. Click that box. And then you can update or change if you made a mistake correct your personal profile your name your birth date your passport number your email address your uh, destination in the philippines and that is the only thing you can update 
and don't worry the QR code will still be the same as I mentioned before if you have this QR code you're good to go so that is all about One Health Pass. I hope this video has helped you and guided you. If you have successfully landed in the Philippines, share your experience in the comment section. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll I'll be I'll try to answer them. God bless you all. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like the video to support this channel so I can keep on making travel updates. I'll see you in another travel update, guys. Stay safe and God bless. Bye.